Welcome to Injury Law Today, the ultimate podcast for personal injury lawyers. Join us today as we share the practical tips and strategy to help you run a successful practice. Today, I'm honored to have a very special attorney out of New York City, Paul Paul Campson. Welcome, Paul. Great to be here. Thank you. Nice to have you here. So we're going to jump right into it. We just got 30 minutes on this session. Um, can you tell us about your background and how you became a personal injury lawyer? Sure. Um, so, um, you know, I was always a big uh, reader of uh, history and biographies, and I noticed a lot of the um, men and had an impact on um, society were lawyers, um, wh whether they were practicing lawyers or not, legal um, background. Um, so that was always very appealing to me. And I, uh, after I graduated from law school, I got a job with a workers comp firm on Long Island. And then that parlayed into a, a personal injury law firm. And then uh, after about five or six years, uh, my wife and I, who's also a lawyer, we met in court and um, decided to start our own firm. And uh, we've had it going for 23 years now. Awesome. Awesome. That is amazing. That is amazing. So can you uh, share with us, tell us um, what sets your firm apart from others in the industry? Sure. So we're a, um, uh, we're a small uh, niche firm. Uh, it's me and my wife. You know, we, we do have staff, obviously, um, but uh, we, we treat each of our clients um, like family because we're a family firm. And I know that might sound a bit cliche, but Every client has my cell number. Every client has my wow. wife's. They could text. They can call. You know, come holidays, we're getting calls from clients wishing us, you know, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy Thanksgiving, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> I think they all run this together, and uh, it's, it's, it's been a great, great experience. That's awesome. How do you approach um, client intake and... Uh, case evaluation to ensure the best outcome for your clients? Sure. So we, um, you know, we, we have people who do intakes and everything, but uh, almost immediately, either uh, me or my wife, Dawn, we, we hop on the phone with the, the clients. We get, you know, we get a sense of who they are, where they're coming from, how we're able to help them. Um, and, you know, also what they really need. Cause a lot of times they think, Oh, I just need, somebody to, to represent me, but they also need somebody, you know, to make sure their bills are paid, somebody to make sure their spouse or their children uh, are, are set up and can continue the, the lifestyle while we're working on the law firm. So it's a, it's a little bit involved process, but we look at everything we can possibly do to help our client. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. In your experience, um, what are some, some common misconceptions about personal injury law that you often encounter? Well, I, I think the whole um, ambulance chasing thing it has really done the profession a disservice. Yeah. You know, you know, I, like like any pro profession, there there are good and uh, bad for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we uh, been at the forefront of uh, changing laws uh, throughout the United States. You know, without personal injury attorneys, there would no there would be no seatbelt laws. There wouldn't be any product liability laws. You know, there wouldn't be anybody to hold these corporations accountable. You know, that's essentially what the plaintiff's bar does throughout the country. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, can you share a particular challenge in case you've handled and how you overcame any obstacles uh, to reach a successful resolution? Sure. So um, a lot of the, the uh, cases are, you know, car crashes, slip and fall, strip and falls, that type of stuff. We're doing a lot of work with uh, lead and asbestos and mold uh, cases because they really um, affect the, the family. Everyone who's living in, in the, the home or the apartment or, or you know, uh, the rental, whatever it may be, if there's any of these conditions, it, it, you know, it has impact on little children, which um, ramifications won't be known for maybe years. It has impacts on, on parents and, and caregivers who may have may have a pre-existing condition maybe they were a smoker but it, that doesn't knock them out of the ballpark and what we're doing a lot now um is we're really uh focusing in on the um sexual assault and sexual abuse cases um we we, we had a case years ago where there was a 
um, you know, all the names have been, you know, redacted, but it was a, it was really a, one of the first sexual assault cases in New York where we alleged uh, our client was um, purposely given a sexually transmitted disease by his girlfriend who didn't want him to break up with, wow. uh, her, you know, and we really went, I had written articles about it. Um, and we, we were successful in, in getting the case resolved, but it was a, it was a long fight. I, I think it lasted six plus years and wow. every, every day was just a battle on that one. Wow. That's something else. Um, there's a lot of changes being made. So um, how do you stay up to date with changes and developments in the personal injury law? Right. So we're on a, a lot of committees where uh, we belong to a lot of bar associations. We, you know, we, we feel it's part of our uh, very duty for clients to stay up to stay up to speed. Sure, you know, the, the New York State has a, a legal education program uh, where every two years you have to take, you know, X amount of credits. But that's really just the bare minimum. If you're not uh, on top of what's happening, because as you said, things are changing so quickly. Mm -hmm. You have to be really diligent and, and, and do your homework and know that everything you're doing will eventually, in some way, help your clients get a full. Right, right. So how do you balance the need to advocate for your clients with the ethical um, considerations of the legal prof profession? You know, there are a, a ton of laws and regulations and uh, ethical uh, codes that the Bar Association, Bar Association imposes on attorneys, and, and, and rightfully so, I mean, for sure. Uh, but, you know, you can, within the letter of the law, uh, vigorously represent your client, you know, and do everything possible to make sure your client uh, uh, is made whole at the end of the case. You know, mm -hmm. there are ways to use the ethic laws, not only as a, as a shield, but as a sword to advocate for your clients. And, you know, I, my wife and I have been lawyers for over 30 years. We've had our own firm for, you know, over two decades. We're pretty familiar with uh, how to use that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So how do you manage and prioritize your caseload to ensure that each client receives the attention and resources they need? You know, so these days it's, it's really all, all about uh, automation, right? The, the, there's a workflow. We've got plans put in place you know a new client comes in again it's my wife or i we speak to them we find out what what what's needed they get put into the case management system and that triggers a whole bunch of automations that we need to do different checklists that have to be done to get this case on the right track and to continue to uh, propel it forward so automation is huge in uh, making sure we serve our clients to the best we can Absolutely. Can you share some tips for individuals who have been injured um, in an accident and are um, considering uh, pursuing legal action? You know, with all these uh, TV uh, shows and, and movies and, and so forth, the important thing is documentation of evidence. If you're in a car accident, take photos, take a video, uh, take a picture of the other driver, take a picture of the cars, the street signs, what have you. What, what have you, call the police, you know, seek medical attention, tell the doctor, this hurts, that hurts. It's all about document. Insurance companies can't wait to find a flaw in your case and to use that against you to deny you what you deserve. Uh, and we're here as a bulwark to make sure they don't do that. Absolutely. So what do you see the future um, of personal injury law, the law industry and how do you plan to adapt and stay ahead of the curve? Sure. So there's a big push now um, with consolidation of uh, law firms, almost like to become uh, and, and there you, you you see some of the bigger firms that are uh, they 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 brag about that they're national firms. I mean, they have offices all over the country, and Arizona became the first state to allow non-lawyers be partners in a law firm. Wow. It hasn't come to New York yet or any of the other states, but people in the know think that's happening. So, you know, I think that may down the line be the future of law firms, but I think right now as 
you have a good law firm, you serve your clients to the best of your ability, your people, uh, and they know people would rather deal with, hey, let me get my lawyer on the phone. Uh, let me shoot them a text and they'll answer. You know, some of these bigger firms, they're like a giant corporation within themselves. And it's really tough to get, you know, a, a named partner on the phone. Absolutely. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you for sharing, Paul. Again, um, every I know everybody's going to love this episode. I'll be in touch. I'll reach out to you. You gave some excellent tips and insights and strategy into what it's like to be a personal injury attorney in New York City. Campos and Camp, I'm sorry, Campson and Campson. Y'all go check them out. Thanks, Paul. I'll be in touch. Be with you. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye-bye.